Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ash Photography video. And since the last time I saw you, I've made a lot of changes. Now one you may notice I have a, a guide scope on my telescope as well as a brand new ZWO ASI 120mm. Now this is just a tiny guide camera and what I've done around the body is I have 3D printed a cooling module. So basically a fan will sit on here and it will cool the camera body and the sensor. And what today's video is about is answering the age-old question of can you use a guide camera for astrophotography? Now on their website, you can use this for planetary guiding and somewhat um, deep sky um, astrophotography, but it's super hard. Now I'm gonna have to get super precise polar alignment since my field of view is less than one degree in the night sky, which is super small. Uh, what I've done is I've had to attach different extenders to my telescope here. I've got um, around two inches of extension out from the tube um, using the an old uh, Barlow lens that I had that I don't use anymore because the optics suck. I just took out the, um, the optic itself and now it's kind of just a um, spacer and I have an SP bony spacer. I can focus this thing uh, using one extension tube but I put on another one just to be safe. Now uh, it's kind of a no-go for astrophotography uh, in this time of month. The full moon is rising um, by the time that I'm recording this, and uh, that's kind of it. Uh, you can't really image in a full moon. Um, however, I do have a UHC filter in case I wanted to hop over to a um, planetary nebulae or something of the sorts because this uh, field of view again is less than one degree in the night sky and planetary nebulae are super far away um, and they have a lot of distant um, dark gas and this camera can pick it up. Um, now I have been doing some modifications to my um, my camera camera here. Um, one of them was I finally purchased a Peltier cold plate heat sink and a 40 millimeter fan and all of these kind of sit together in, in one large rectangle but uh, it's still kind of in the works um, but yeah so I'm waiting for the 50 millimeter fan to arrive for this camera and if you want this 3d print design I will link it in the description below all right well uh, let's get the setup outside and start imaging now one crazy thing to mention is that I need precise polar alignment down to the arc second, if not zero polar error. Now the field of view is super duper small, um, which sucks a lot because um, one, my solver may not be able to solve the images, but I did download the um, required index files for um, less than one degree in the night sky. So we should be good to go. All right, so let's go over the gear. So the camera is the ZWO ASI 120mm. Uh, I've got two um, extensions uh, that you see there. Uh, my telescope is my Skywatcher Evolux 62ED. The guide camera, which or the guide scope, which I'm not going to be using for today's video, is the SB Bony 50 millimeter guide scope. And everything's ran on a Raspberry Pi, and the mount is the Explore Scientific iExos 102. Now this new guide scope boasts a 190 millimeter focal length, but since the field of view on this camera is so teeny weeny. Uh, it kind of boasts up to a, I believe, 900 millimeter focal length, which is absolutely crazy. Now, I did have a lot of fringing around the stars. Uh, that's just because it is um, so close up and it's not made to be that zoomed in, but you know, it is what it is. All right, enough talk, let's get outside. All right, so we're in the backyard. Uh, it is nighttime. Let's see if I can focus. It is nighttime. Although, doesn't look like it back there, uh, just because all the light pollution. But, uh, yeah. So we're in the backyard, um, and we're just gonna get everything set up and ready to go. Uh, I believe my camera is plugged in, and the cool thing about my Raspberry Pi is I can connect to it via its IP address. Um, whenever I'm on the home Wi-Fi. So, we are in the uh, Astroberry home. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open K-Stars. Okay, so now that I have K-Stars open, I can go to the INDI or ECOS 
and that'll connect my filter, my manual filter for red, green, and blue since this is a monochrome camera. Uh, it'll connect to my Nikon D3400 if I have it plugged in. Uh, in this case, I don't. Um, and it can also connect to my uh, mount. All right, so I got the polar alignment software to work. Uh, now I'm working on my polar alignment. Uh, it's super hard to do. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it could just be because I have a really narrow field of view, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it is my first time using a dedicated astronomy camera, so I'm going to be learning the curves uh, with all that stuff, especially because it's a monochrome camera. Uh, I'm definitely going to, if I'm going to use this for astrophotography, I'm going to have to purchase red, green, and blue, or H-alpha, sulfur, and oxygen as a kind of palette for collecting dust. Okay, so I'm going to be shooting with a synthetic sort of um, red, green, and blue. It's shooting LRGB without LRGB, or sorry, without RGB. RGB is red, green, blue filters, and you definitely need those if you're getting into monochrome astrophotography. Now, I'm shooting with a basic monochrome astrophotography uh, thing, so it is what it is. Uh, I'm shooting with a ultra high contrast filter. I will still do some uh, synthetic red, green, and blue, uh, but uh, it is what it is in terms of doing my astrophotography photos. So, uh, I'm trying to polar line, but it's not going great. Um, I don't know why. It's super hard to do this kind of stuff especially because, um, again, it's a super small field of view in the night sky, and also my polar alignment, um, my polar alignment app doesn't do great in terms of doing polar alignment, if that makes sense. I'm just going to eyeball it at this point. I have a sort of idea of what I need my field of view to be in terms of astrophotography. So I'm quote unquote polar aligned for the most part. Uh, it is what it is. I won't be getting any closer than this. So I guess we'll go ahead and start taking some photos of the ring nebula again. Go ahead and turn down my brightness because that could be what could be causing the sensor glow quote unquote. Alright let's go ahead and go to and the mount will start slewing to the ring nebula. That is not where the ring nebula is at all. All you have to do technically in this, show you guys, is let's see if I can get this kind of thing here. Just type in ring nebula. And it shows up right there. You can't really see it because that toolbar, but ring nebula. Wow, so easy. And then I double click it, and then I go back to the mount thing, and then I just go to. Hold on, give it a second. Click go to. And it goes. Just like that. And then pretty high up right now but it'll do for until the moon rises okay and then all we do from there is we go back to this kind of bullseye icon and then we have all the settings for the stuff we'll go ahead and capture and solve and salute the target the accuracy is 30 arc seconds and it should just pop up right here we may not see it first try um, yeah we did not see it first try obviously but it'll slew to the kind of point where it is and then and it takes another photo and we have it in the field of view right there that bright thing right there that is the ring nebula and it'll keep slowing over that way and we're almost there somewhat so 
can see. Almost there. We'll see it update live. Now I may have to do this by hand. Doesn't seem like it wants to go that way a little bit. Uh, we got 38 arc seconds. It's still going. We'll see. And then I will probably hop onto the computer and every now that everything's focused and ready to go, we can go ahead and start cleaning all the camera gear up out here and then start to go ahead and continue going on with our stuff. Okay, so it is the next day and I have some good and bad news about last night's astrophotography. Now, since this camera has such a low field of view, which is less than one degree in the night sky, my polar alignment was really bad and I was not able to get some good subframes on the ring nebula. Now, the stars were super stretched and uh, I tried doing my best on polar alignment, but it was super hard to. Um, so I kind of just gave up on astrophotography, uh, but I did slew over to the moon which, by the way, came out amazing. Even though this camera has a 1.2 megapixel sensor, it does really good for the moon and planets. Now, I'll show the photo of the moon up here, somewhere over here, and then I also hopped over to Saturn after the moon, which I'll put down here somewhere. Now, both of these have some really good details in them. Um, Saturn really blew me away because I didn't see it in my field of view at first, and then I kind of slewed I kind of slewed down a little bit and then I saw it and I was like, wow. Because it was pretty zoomed in since this camera is such a small sensor that your field of view, again, is super small, but you could see the rings and some of its moons if you had the gain high enough. Now, I would say personally, if you have a guide camera um, with a guide camera attached sort of thing, like if you have one up here and one imaging, you could definitely do astrophotography with um, a guide camera but it'll be super hard to do it without um, as long as you have really good polar alignment then you may be able to do it without a guide camera but um, personally I need a guide camera because my polar alignment isn't so well um, but uh, it is what it is um, and yeah so to this kind of test on the ZWO ASI 120MM came out pretty good, pretty bad. Um, kind of in between on um, it in astrophotography. Now, obviously, people do different um, things with this camera. Most people use it for guiding, and very rare people use it for astrophotography. Um, but if you're starting out with um, just a, if you want to start out with a uh, uncooled astronomy camera you should probably get something a little bit better than the ZWO ASI 120. All right well I think that wraps up today's video. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, even though there were a little bit of bumps in today's video I still had a lot of fun creating it and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the final images that I will show on screen right now. So until next time, clear skies.